Let's hit the uh, overall market move first of all. Was it uh, fairer that we were down 900 points on the Dow initially or the level we're at now, pairing those uh, losses to around 300? Is that more reasonable? I think you're probably getting to more reasonable levels at this point. I think, you know, a lot of people, especially as London desks filled up, are really going to view this as sort of Brexit and fast forward. We know that there was a lot of risk positions that were put on, especially in the last 48 hours, uh, when a lot of that sort of polling information and stories are coming out. We're telling everyone Hillary's odds were rising. That sort of has to get unwound. But I think everyone here went through the Brexit playbook. They saw all the, the knee-jerk reactions negative. They see the positions come off. Then they have to start to uh, retrace that. Uh, I think Trump coming out sounding very very conciliatory certainly helps that that trade now uh, but there's just very little certainty to price anything longer term at this point and Richard is one of the offsetting factors for markets today the fact that now a rate hike in December looks a little bit less likely uh, it's definitely one of the fundamental factors. I think for the next 24 to 48 hours, you're simply going to see markets move on the position squeezes that are going to go on. Um, you're not going to have any clarity on what the Fed's going to do. Uh, the market seems to have put it somewhere between 40 to 50 percent odds for December. And I think given where we are right this second, that's probably fair. I think the Fed's going to come into this in December. And if we actually don't have a significant tightening in monetary conditions, if the dollar is roughly flat, if equities are roughly flat, they're going to look at this as an economy that hasn't fundamentally changed. And, and I think the markets would be wrong to discount too much the ability of the Fed to go. But you, you simply have absolute uncertainty on that fact for the next four to five weeks, because in part, it's going to depend on exactly how this market has to reprice. The strategists are starting to put out their morning notes on that uncertainty factor. There are a lot of buckets here, geopolitics, <laughs> trade, tax policy, the Supreme Court, what the cabinet will look like. Of all of those, as an investor, Richard, which one is the biggest question mark for you? Uh, I think you're looking at what does fiscal policy look like, what's the actual spending plans that are going to come through, and, and how much protectionism and, and trade issues are going to come through. I think that's what matters for the markets. You know, the Supreme Court may have social issues that come through, but that doesn't really feed through onto the market side. You know, dollar mex is going to remain under the crosshairs here. Uh, I think you can go back to that Gettysburg speech that Trump gave a few weeks ago where he tried to lay out his 100-day plan. And a lot of that was just very much in his sort of drain the swamp side of things, of cleaning out government. That, that the markets will really look through and, and perhaps even see marginally positive. The question's going to be his talk of paying for the wall. And in fact, in that speech, he talked about reimbursing for the wall, which may suggest that while he would see himself building it, reimbursing means through tariffs, through taxing some of those remittances, maybe that's where he starts to get that through. He, he said in those initial few days, tearing up NAFTA um, or, or going through to renegotiate NAFTA. So I think those are the sorts of things that the markets would still view as negative if those policies are delivered. And, and I think that's really the key point point to highlight here is that when we were looking at Brexit, it was a vote for a policy, but with an uncertain timing. And in this case, we voted for a person who we have a very certain timing on when they start. But now the uncertainty is around exactly which policies ultimately get delivered. Let's assume, though, that he follows through on his more bellicose instincts with respect to trade. What does that do to the global economy? What does it do to the American economy? Does it send it, for example, into a recession? So, uh, you know, if we blindly take this as Trump is going to be very aggressive in renegotiating this, that he's going to try and give Mexico a take it or leave it author, uh, um, uh, offer, that does suggest a lot more downside into the uh, stock markets. It does suggest that the Mexican peso needs to devalue much more significantly to get to that fair value. Uh, the question that will immediately follow if he follows that tact is going to be what happens with the renminbi. Is he going to move to try and put exactly. that into a, a currency manipulation category? Then this move opens up into Asia uh, and into something where we know the Chinese need to continue to devalue or depreciate that currency slightly over time. So yes, there, there certainly are avenues where this can become more aggressive. But I think you can look at Trump's initial reaction today. And, and the, 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 the honest question is going to be how much of Donald Trump, the president, is going to be a pragmatist and how much of it is going to be a populist. And that's going to determine whether he takes any cues from how the market prices his views and his ideas and, and tries to make these a bit more uh, something that can actually sustain some positive sentiment over time.